As the year comes to an end, we have yet another rebuildable tank atomizer. Stay tuned and we're going to take a look at the billow tonight on the Vapor Chronicles. Hello and welcome back to this edition of the Vapor Chronicles. Tonight we're going to take a look at the Billow. Now, if you don't know what the Billow is, it's a rebuildable tank atomizer, and it was created uh, from a collaboration between EH Pro and eSiggity. And if you were interested in picking up the Billow after this review, you can click below and uh, click on the link for the website to purchase this from. Now, I purchased this out of my pocket. Uh, this is something that I actually ordered, and to be honest with you, sometimes I like buying products because it gives me a different perspective uh, similar to you, my subscribers and the viewers. You know, sometimes when you get stuff sent to you for review, you know, it's a little different than, you know, taking your hard-earned money and putting it on the table and getting a product. I did purchase this. Uh, it came in two days ago. And I have to tell you, I've had a hell of a time trying to get this review out and published. Part of the problem was is that I do a lot of my video editing and recording on my iPad and as I was doing the build for some reason uh, there was some I don't know if there was some metal on my ceramic tweezers but every time I kept trying to pinch my coils I was getting a short and the, the the coil was popping and splitting so anyway I don't want to bore you with all that nonsense but then my iPad dropped and cracked the screen and I was having trouble you know pausing and starting the video and it was just a nightmare so I switched to my iPhone and uh, anyway if the video quality on the up close switches and is if it's kind of erratic it's because I was having technical difficulties and I apologize you know shit happens anyway let's get to the review the billow this year has been an awesome year for rebuildable tank atomizers some of them have even come close to or equaled in some people's opinions the flavor and vapor production you get from a rebuildable atomizer dripper we're really close this year you know drippers are going to be throwback to the good old days people are still going to enjoy them because they're used to that type of vaping but i think the rebuildable tanks are going to be the way to go for simplicity and for portability we had the you know some of the the best ones of the year a lot of people love the orchid v1 2 3 4 5 15 whatever you know it seems like they never stop trying to add features to the orchid you also had you know your k fun updates and even though the k fun was out before that now we have the k fun 4 which i'll be reviewing soon we have some of the hybrid tanks like the sub tank where you have a rebuildable atomizer built into the tank and you also have pre-built coils and the flavor and vapor production that's my tank of the year by far but some honorable mentions you have the limo uh, drop and the limo uh, which are awesome and i use them regularly they're in my rotation but tonight at the end of the year comes the billow and there's a lot of things i love about the billow number one this thick quartz glass that they've used for the five milliliter tank is beautiful i mean it really looks and feels solid um the build quality of the billow feels more substantial than the limo now i didn't say it vapes better or it's easier to build on i just said it feels better in the hands and that's part of the equation you know when you're looking at buying a product build quality matters but also vapor production flavor ease of build you know simplicity um those are the types of things now the limo is a single coil tank atomizer the Billow is a dual coil atomizer. Now you can cut up, you can shut off the airflow control under the uh, Cyclops uh, air hole, and you can do that with these little adjustable screws that I'll show you on the up close underneath the unit. Um, and you can close one off, and you can do a single coil build. But this thing really shines in dual coil mode and at higher wattages, from what I've experienced. Um, so the build wasn't very difficult it's pretty similar to like your orchid builds you just need to make sure that you follow some simple instructions that i'll add in the up close about you know you sort of want to over wick this tank there have been some things going on with leaking i have not had any leaks on the build that i did it was my first build and i haven't leaked since and i've been vaping this for two days um 
I just refilled it before. There are some issues um, that I'll share with you after the up close uh, with refilling and, and things like that. But overall, it's a great looking quality tank. I think it looks beautiful uh, paired up to the IPV mini that I have here. Uh, this is the black. It's not even like a black black. It's almost like a hyper black, like a metallic, you know, shiny black. And uh, it has a real nice finish to it. There's a little logo inside the tank, which looks good. And this is an authentic tank at an affordable price, which I think is awesome. And that's, I think, where we're going to be heading more in the coming year, where you'll see a lot more authentics that are affordable. I'll spend 30 to $50 for an authentic quality built tank. When you start getting to like 80 to to $100, screw that. I mean, I don't care how good it is. Like I always say, I have no problem with like authentics. I think that the ingenuity, the research and development, the the fact that they are so expensive that these companies have to recoup some of their uh, costs, I understand. Um, at the same time, I can appreciate it and I don't hate anybody who gets these devices. We all have a budget and luckily there's different tiers of products depending on what your budget is. It doesn't mean we hate on people that have higher budgets, they just make a better living than we do and good for them. I mean, I, I can't hate on anybody. I'm grateful for what I have, I'm grateful for what you have. As long as you made it honestly and you work hard for it, more power to you. I mean, um, I think without these high-end devices, you know, vaping sort of has this trickle-down effect where, you know, the ingenuity and the and the, the features start at the top and they begin to work their way down into more affordable, you know, areas. Imported products that are inspired by, may, maybe not necessarily clones, but everyone's inspired by everyone else. This is cool that it's a, it's a design product. It does look very similar uh, to the Limo, even though it's a single coil versus a dual, but they're both five milliliter tanks. This is a 22 millimeter diameter. This is 23 millimeter diameter. So uh, they both sit really well in the IPV Mini and they're both very similar in height. This drip tip's a little bit longer, but you know, tank wise, pretty close. This does feel more robust and a little bit stronger um, due to the thicker glass. This glass is kind of thin. Um, so let's do this. Before I show you, I'm gonna put it on some, some uh, box mods and, and some other devices and show you what it looks like. Uh, but let's zoom in, let's do a build. Let's take out uh, the package apart, take a look at everything, and then we'll uh, come back out. I'll give you my impressions. We'll take it for a vape and I'll finish up this review. All right, so let's zoom in. Hey guys, welcome back. So here's a look at the outside of the box of the Billow from eSiggity and EH Pro. Uh, this came from Hawaii from eSiggity and you can pick this up at www.esiggity.com. Uh, I paid out of my pocket $36.49 for this device and I also paid $2.68 shipping. The total was $39.17 US. So I think that that is a great price for an authentic quality tank. So let's open up this box and take a look inside. So you can see on the outside there's some logos and markings, UPC and uh, talking about safety, keep it away from children and animals. And let's slide this open. So you wanna push from the side and then this comes out. And we'll put this aside and then you open the device like this. So it says eHealth Pro and then there's your tank. Okay, so here's the device and I noticed that on the case it says eHealth Pro and I just put two and two together and I realized that EH Pro stands for eHealth Pro. So not that that matters, but I just noticed it and I feel like an idiot. So there's that. So the tank that I went with is the black, and this is really, really cool. This is almost like a hyper black. It's like a polished, shiny black. Uh, when you compare it to a, a true black, um, like here's my tiny little emo, uh, Limo drop. That's what it looks like here with the Limo drop. So that's the black on the drop. It is shiny on the Limo, it's not a flat black, but this is much more of a polished sort of metallic black, which looks really nice. Actually, I think this would pair really well with the black on the, yeah. So this pairs really, really well with the IPV Mini. Let's put this on here just for comparison. 
Oh yeah. So here's the IPV Mini with this black on here and it looks perfect. It's really, really a nice combination of colors from these two devices, the black IPV and the EH Pro e Billow. All right, so let's take this off. Enough with the gazing at the beautiful mod matching. All right, so here's the tank. Uh, you have a removable drip tip, nice and tight, big, thick um, rubber gaskets here that makes it seal nice and tight so it's not gonna wobble. And you have your adjustable copper firing pin. You have your refill port here on the bottom. And let's unscrew the tank. So there you go, you can take the top off and thread it here. And the glass is uh, pressure fitted to the rubber at the bottom here. So you wanna be careful not to take the top off, it might leak juice. All right, so there's the glass. Really nice, thick glass here, but you wanna, always wanna be careful that you don't crack it or shatter it. And here's your chimney. And here's your one, two, three, four channels for juice. And there's a nice little logo on the side here. But everything looks really well machined. It feels quality and solid. Now this has a four post design. You have two large air flows here, airflow here for a dual coil build. This is predominantly for dual coil builds. Nice, real deep juice wells on both sides for getting this in. And I'll show you a trick in a minute about how to put your wicking to minimize leaking when you're, uh, cause there have been some complaints of leaking with this tank, but there are remedies for that, I believe. So there you go, there's your build. And this here is for adjustment of your airflow for each of the channels or for each of the uh, coils that you're gonna have airflow. So one here, one here, and you have screws here to adjust the airflow. I prefer a click uh, rotating airflow adjustment, but I pretty much like an air draw. So once I have it set, I doubt I'll ever adjust it. So it's not a huge um, problem for me. You could, you'll also see at the bottom here that the center um, is insulated. There's insulation down here at the bottom. So there's your insulation. And that's pretty much it. And we'll walk you through a build. All right, so we'll be right back. Okay, so for this build, we're gonna try to go for around one ohm with the dual coil. So we're gonna do 10 wraps of 28 gauge cam thaw. That's one, two. You wanna wrap this as tightly as possible. Three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 10, there we go. I'm gonna pause the video because my heater just turned on. Heater finally stopped running. And let's just lock this in a little bit. And I am by no means a pro builder, but I think I'm somewhat competent. If anything, I'm safe. And if I'm not safe, the 
devices that I use have built-in idiot-proof features that will protect me. So I'm just tightening the positive and the negative for these posts. And I'll move the coil over a little bit. And that just stayed loose a little bit. I'm using 28 gauge canthal, so it's a little thin. But that should be fine. All right, so. Let's snip these. I'm going to need to buy like a big super magnet so I can pick up all these clippings that I snip off all the time. All right, so let's see what this is reading on the Segeli. So this is reading two ohms, which would be perfect for the build that I'm trying to do. Let's heat this coil up a little bit. Uh, so I finished this build um, basically uh, right now it's reading one ohm so it's a dual coil one ohm build and I'm firing pretty good so, so that's good so let's wick this all right so let me grab some cotton and get this wicked up All right, so here we have some cellulose cotton. Making quite a mess today. And I'm gonna split this about in half. All right guys, sorry about that. Uh, my iPad just totally lost power and I gotta get this review done. So hopefully this doesn't sound like complete shit. Uh, we're on a headset now, so and we're on my iPhone. Anyway, uh, here's the solute cotton. I'm gonna pull it through. It's a little too much. <clears throat> you wanna have a little bit of resistance with the cotton, but you don't want it to be tight. So notice how this is pulling through, but there's a little grab, but it's not too much. So that should be good. And let's grab our second piece, and we're gonna take a little bit off of that just to start with, so we don't make the same mistake twice. That's the cool thing about dual coils, is if you make a mistake with the one coil, you can learn and fix it on the second. <laughs> All right, so let's send this little brother through. You want to leave your cotton a little fluffy. You don't want to spin it too much or too hard because then you're not going to get as much uh, absorption from your liquid. So there we go. Now I'm going to do a preliminary snip. Now I left a little little heavy on the cotton on purpose because I was reading some of the the walkthroughs on this device and um, normally you know I would unscrew my chimney and send the the cotton through the top, but you can't do that. So I was reading some of the walkthroughs and I saw that there was some leaking when you leave the the channels in between the negative and the positive posts too open. So you want to build up your cotton pretty thick and go cotton heavy. Uh, don't block your juice channels, but you would definitely want to block the channels in between the positive and the negative posts. All right. So there's that. And I think that's going to be good for now. So what we're going to do is I'm going to grab some uh, juice and we're going to wet, wet it up. Okay. So tonight we're going to be dining on the strawberry cheesecake shake, which is my fave from quitthatgrit.com. And I'm just going to get a little bit of wicking wetness going on here.
So I'm just sort of, you know, not stuffing, but I'm getting the wick inside so it doesn't block the threads. And I'm getting a little bit under the coil, but you don't want to block the airflow. So you want to make sure the airflow is clear, the juice channel is clear, but you have enough wick in there. So it's, you know, it's not hard, but you want to be a little careful with it. And it's never too late to get rid of some wick if you need to. And I'll give you guys a closer look once I get finished with this. <clears throat> and I'm actually using a lot more wick than I usually do just because I heard of the, the leaking and the gurgling flooding problem. So I'm just, I might be overcompensating. Okay, so the juice channels are open still. I think this is too much wick, but we'll see. I might get lucky. I might not. Um, coils are juiced up. And let's see if I can... <laughs> There's no way this is going to work. I think I went too big with everything. The coils are too big. Juice is too big. Everything's too big, but we'll see. Ooh, and it screws on. All right. It fires. It fires. Let's put this back on. That's snug. You fill from the bottom on this device. All right. So we're going to unscrew the fill port. Okay, so here you go. We got juice in. We got cotton everywhere. And we're going to put it on the. What are we going to put it on? We're going to put it on nothing. This is probably the most disastrous review I've ever done because I nothing's working right for some reason. So, <clears throat> talking to myself, I'm on a shitty microphone. Whatever. All right, let me grab my other mod and I'll be right back. All right, guys, welcome back. I'm gonna just run down a couple of the specs. First of all, it has really, really do, uh, deep juice channels. So I have not had any problems with dry hits. My build was easy. This thing, I can freaking turn it up to like 45 watts on a one ohm coil, dual coil build, and I get no dry hits, chain vaping. So the juice flows perfect. Another thing is it has a four post design. I like a four post design. It makes it easier to build on. You have two, two separate openings for your positive and negative for the one coil. You have two separate openings for the positive and negative on your other coil. Um, I was able to use uh, 
28 gauge canthal. I was able to use 24 gauge canthal. No problem, you know, fitting the, uh, the wire through the posts and screwing them down. I didn't have any snapping wire or anything. Um, it also has the two race Cyclops airflow heads. So I'm not getting a lot of gurgling from the device. And like I said, you know, I'm not having a lot of leakage problems once everything's buttoned up and tight. On the other hand, refilling, I don't know if I'm doing something wrong, you guys can comment in the comments below, but there have been some issues with refilling this for me, okay? Um, the thick quartz glass is nice, I've already said that. Uh, the 510 adjustable copper um, 510 is really, really nice. No problems there at all. It's worked on every device I put it on. It comes in black or silver, so if you wanna get this black, you can get black. It's $1.50 more if you get the black. If you want the silver, it's a dollar fifty less. It's about thirty-four dollars and ninety-nine cents. I think I said that before, but it's, it's relatively inexpensive plus shipping. Uh, it took about a, maybe four or five days to come from Honolulu, Hawaii to New Jersey, so that wasn't too bad. Let me go into the negatives real quick because there's not many, but let me share with you what I don't like. Number one, on the bottom of the device, you have and see there's a little bit of juice there, so it does leak a little bit. Uh, I didn't follow the instructions I read on the website, um, which I need to do, is to put a little bit of um, plumber's tape on the airflow hole adjusters, which is at the bottom of the device here. There's two little screws. And basically what the screws do when you turn them clockwise, they go inside the unit and they block the air hole here and they block the air hole here. If you turn them counterclockwise, it brings the holes out or the, the screws out and it opens up the airflow. Now the airflow on the device is very, very open for, for taking nice deep lung inhales. If you want a tighter draw, you just tighten the screws. So the, the flexibility of adjustment is amazing. And I'm the type of person, I like the lung hit, so I'm gonna open them up all the way and leave them that way forever. So that doesn't really make a difference to this guy. But for you, you know, if you like to play around with your airflow controls, this might be a little bit of a burden for you, all right? So, airflow, nice and open. Limo, five milliliter, fully open. I would say that the airflow on the billow is more open, slightly, okay? Very close. If you probably took that little cylinder off of the uh, limo, it would probably be the same airflow. But the airflow is perfect. Adjustment of the airflow for me is not an issue. Refilling. For some reason, when I use my blunt tip syringe and I start to fill this, as soon as I start to squeeze at an, at an acceptable rate, not even like pouring it in there, but just like flowing it in, the juice starts backing up and coming out. I can adjust the angle, I can try to get it in deeper. It just does not go in. Like with the Limo, you pop the, the, the blunt tip syringe in, you squeeze the shit out of it, it fills up real quick and you're done. This thing, man, I cannot get a good flow going with the juice. I use 50-50, I use 60-40, I just can't get it to flow right. So I don't know if it's my error, if I'm doing something stupid, but I would. I don't really like the, the refill um, on this. It would be nice if the glass tank screwed in to the bottom uh, and I could unscrew the top and fill from the top or if there was a refill screw on the top that was wide open and I could go straight in and fill it that way. That would be really sweet like on my uh, Orchid V4. Other than that, love the drip tip. I love the, or the I guess, uh, textured uh, rim around here. I think it looks cool. The drip tip matches. The bottom matches. Everything looks good. The build is easy to build on. The deck is nice and and big for doing a nice thick coil. You know, I over cottoned it to make sure that, you know, you wanna make sure that you wick in between the gaps on both sides of each of the positive and negative posts. There's a gap in between. When you do your wick, over wick it a little bit, okay? And fill those gaps so that you don't have those leaking problems that everyone was talking about. I did that and I really don't have any leaks except for a tiny little bit out of the bottom um, and it hasn't been an issue once I have it screwed on my device, so. Let's see how this thing vapes. Enough with the chit chat, all right? There's your specs. I have a one ohm dual coil build on here. I'm running a 6040 juice. And the, the cool thing about the juice I'm, I'm vaping on, I don't usually vape this, but sometimes I just get a taste for it. This is like a minty menthol sort of, not a tobacco, but just like a mint. It tastes like those little, you know those little wrapped mints that are clear, they're like glacier ice, like they look like little ice cubes. It tastes like that. Um, it's called icicles. 
It's from a local vape shop. And um, I have this at 30 watts. It's reading 0.9 ohms on this device at 5.2 volts. So let's give this a vape at max power on the IPV Mini. I do notice that with any device, when you start to flip the tank upside down, and especially if the um, the wicks are really juiced up, you know, you're gonna get some juice that runs into the chimney at first, and you're gonna get a little bit in your mouth. Not a big deal for me, but that does happen, and that's what just happened a little bit. I haven't gurgled all of the past two days, but all of a sudden I do this review, and this has been like the review that doesn't wanna happen for some reason. I don't know what's going on. Today, my water pump went on my car. I was out having lunch, and I was gonna come back and finish the review. The water pump went. Thank God my best friend who's a mechanic was with me and we dropped the car off at his shop. But I mean, it's been one of those freaking days, let me tell you. Um, but whatever, life's still good. Water pumps can be fixed, so can gurgling tanks. So all I'm doing is I'm just sort of putting a little bit of juice or a little bit of uh, paper towels rolled up into the air airflow vents. So it's great. The things that I notice, the flavor's great, airflow's great, the tank capacity is perfect, 22 millimeter diameter is my favorite. Uh, it really is just a, a really nice tank as long as you build it correctly. It's a nice, thick, rich, saturated vape, similar to your Limo, very similar to your, um, your Orchid builds, and uh, Another thing I like about menthol or minty vapes is that you can pretty much kill them at different temperatures and they still produce really good flavor and uh, vapor. So let me, uh, let me put this on a higher wattage device and give, you, give it a run for you. All right, so here it is on the Segali 100, 100 watt plus. And uh, I have this set to 45 watts at, and this is reading one ohm at 6.8 volts. So I was doing this earlier and I really enjoyed it. So it's a little high, but for some reason this menthol, it can take it like a champ. So let's vape on this. Oh, by the way, 22 millimeters, zero overhang over the beveled edges. It sits on here perfectly. Let me show you that. It sits on there perfect. And, uh, it's a nice tank for this. Now that's good. I'm running uh, six milligrams of Nick right now. There's still a little gurgling or a little spitting, but probably because I was flipping the tank upside down. I've been vaping this for two days, like I said, and, and it hasn't done that. So I'm not gonna write that off as a negative because it hasn't happened. All right, let's do a victory pull. Can ask for more than that. I mean, it's really, really good. No dry hits. It's not even close to dry hitting. It's just bubbles are popping and the vapor's flowing, so it's good. I could do this all day. It's great. Let's take the same tank and let's pop it on something crazy. One ohm coil on my Nunchaku. If you haven't seen the Nunchaku review, take a look. It's pretty cool. And this is not half bad. This is 22 millimeters. And there's a, now this is like, you know, it's called a Nunchaku. So it's kind of like a freaking nunchuck or a magic wand because it's kind of big. But I'll tell you what, I've been using the Nunchaku with 
this little ETS Aspire uh, tank for like all week and it's awesome, I love it. Um, but on here, I have it set to 18 watts max power um, on the one ohm coil and everything's tightened up. So let's see how this vapes with the same juice, same build. It's awesome. <laughs> Perfect. Not too hot. Great vapor production. Great flavor. You could do that all day long. So even it's 18 watts at one ohm, it's wonderful. So the tank is versatile. Let's pop this bad boy on the IPv2S. It sits on there nice, it's clean. So there you go, it's great on there too. I know a lot of you guys have this device, so let's pop it on here too. This will be the last one, I promise. <clears throat> 22 millimeters, as you know, will fit perfectly on your DNA uh, 30 devices like the HANA clones or the HANAs. So there you go, it sits nice in the little well there and I don't have a battery in here so I'm not going to vape on this but you know 30 watts it'll vape similar to the IPv2S or the other IPv mini all right guys so there you have it that's been my billow adventure um, it's a tank that I haven't enjoyed reviewing because it's been such a headache but it's a tank I have enjoyed and I will continue vaping with and learning the ins and outs of it I do hope that they make a revision in the future that works on the airflow adjustment simplicity of that. And I would also like to see um, a little easier fill method uh, for the device. Um, other than that, they have a winner on their hands. I congratulate them for the hard work. And, uh, you know, I, ca I can recommend the product in its current state, but you want to take a look at all the other options in the market, like the Limos, the, K the uh, KFUN V4, and the... Um, the orchids because you know they're all great it's been like product after product of praise from me because sh uh, shit is getting good so i think stuff's even going to get better in the coming weeks i got a whole bunch of stuff that's being sent to me uh innovative new design products from lots of different manufacturers so i'm excited i'll bring it to you as soon as i get them and uh if you haven't subscribed subscribe because you'll get an email letting you know when i upload the most recent content. So I appreciate you. If you have subscribed already, you can also visit me at www.thevaporchronicles.com and I will see you guys soon. Have a wonderful work week and I'll uh, catch you here next time. Have a good one. Okay. So we have six wraps of point, uh, 0.24, uh, 24 gauge canthal. I have a lot to learn, but I'm getting halfway decent, but I, I do take criticism well. So there's a short here, and the reason why is my stupidity. So that was touching, and that's not a no-no. So you want to make sure you don't have that happen. And that caused the coil to break. So that was a perfect example of what not to do. So thank you for watching that. <laughs> Nobody's going to watch any of my fucking videos because I'll put your life in danger. How's that sound? By the way, one of the benefits of having magnetic backplates on your devices is that they pick up canthal like crazy. <laughs> so at least you'll know where your little pieces are so they don't stick in your feet. Fuck. And I have to tell you, I've had a hell of a time trying to get this review out and published. You know, you're going to get some juice that runs into the chimney at first, and you're going to get a little bit in your mouth. Not a big deal for me, but that does happen, and that's what just happened a little bit.
juice on the tongue. More jealous. I don't know what the fuck this is about, but we are flowing juice like Niagara Falls over here.